Dr. Michael Merchant from the Department of Neurology at Loyola Stritch School of Medicine. And today we're going to go over the neurological examination, the physical exam pertinent to the neurological system. Um, this examination is a little different. This is a screening examination where we pretty much touched all the basic areas of the neuro exam. It's a little driven by the history we obtain from the patient and any abnormalities we pick up as we go. So if a patient has a lot of visual complaints, we'll probably uh, elaborate a little more on the visual exam. If they have more weakness in their right lower limb, I'll probably check more of the muscles there and focus a little bit there. So we're really driven based on the patient's story, their history, their complaints, and some of the findings we pick up as we go. But for now, this is a basic screening exam to kind of touch all the bases and to more or less help you think about what you're covering. Think of this exam as, as pretty much a head-to-toe exam. Uh, at, we're not going to get into the mental status exam, but think of that as starting with the head. Then we're going to examine the visual system, the cranial nerves. Then we're going to move down further through the body, testing the limbs. Think about the limbs. We'll be testing things like uh, the motor examination of the limbs, the sensory examination, the reflexes, and the coordination. And then at the end, perhaps, we can check gait. So we've pretty much... That's a way of summarizing it. So when you walk away from the patient, you don't, you're remembering those items going from head to toe and hopefully not forgetting a, a major category. So we're going to get started now. And um, this is Nancy, who's our patient today. And she's been kind enough to uh, let me uh, show the neurological examination. And as usual, before we get started, I'm going to take a minute to wash my hands. This would be the visual field examination by confrontation, perhaps as the patient would see me, uh, testing both eyes at the same time as during the screening neuro exam. So the patient's looking at my nose, I'm looking at hers, and what I'd like you to do is point to the finger that wiggles. Okay, she gets both. Okay, and I'm going to rotate. Both there. Again, when we're doing the visual field exam, we're doing an eye-to-eye, face-to-face -to -face exam. And I'm asking the patient to stare at my nose. And I really want my fingers to be about halfway between us. Okay, if I'm putting my fingers way over here, that's biasing the test. And if by mistake I'm going out very far in the periphery, I could gradually bring them, them in and uh, to the point where you can identify the wiggle. Can you tell me if you see it wiggling yes. there? Okay. And again, I'm verifying that I see it wiggle just about at the time she sees it wiggle. And I want to make sure, again, my fingers are about halfway between us, no matter where we're moving, and that she's focusing in on my nose. A common problem with folks is they don't quite follow that, and they're actually looking at the wiggling finger and moving their eyes. So that, that makes the visual field exam inaccurate. The next thing I want to do is I want to actually look in your eye with the ophthalmoscope, which is a special light. Okay? So what I would do is uh, dim the room, pull down the shades, tell you it's going to get dark, and... Uh, This is our light that I'm talking about. I'm going to just look in your eye. Okay. And we're going to ask the patient to just kind of pick a spot on the wall or the clock, kind of level with your vision, and just stare off there. Now, as I look into your eye, my head may get in your way. So pretend you're just, you have x-ray vision and you're just looking through my head. Okay. Uh, sometimes if your head really gets in the way and blocks one eye, they're going to be moving the other eye off-center off to try and see that target they picked. So it's good to tell the patient. Uh, you can keep blinking all you want. 
um, that's okay. I just want you to just kind of focus on one spot. And what I'm going to do, sometimes it's clumsy with the ophthalmoscope, but with practice, it, uh, yeah, it, you can really develop a smooth technique. Okay, when I'm going to look in the patient's right eye, I'm going to use my right eye uh, and hold the ophthalmoscope with my right hand. Okay, and I hold it fairly close up to my eyebrow, resting it against my cheek to look through the lens. And uh, Nancy's looking off at her target, so I'm going to come at an angle because what I first want to really focus on is her optic disc, which is really more in her nasal retina. So I have to come off temporally at this angle to see her optic disc. And as I get closer to her, sometimes I can maybe put my hand on her shoulder. I've got to get close to look in the uh, retina. I'll see the red reflex, and as I get closer, I will focus in to see the optic disc, and then if I could move around and see the surrounding retina and blood vessels, that's great. Okay, so now I've examined the right eye. Sorry if I blinded you a little bit. And now I will look at her left eye, and now I'll be using my left eye with the ophthalmoscope in my left hand to view her left eye. So again, if you can just keep staring at that one spot, watch out for the bright light. I'm going to hold the ophthalmoscope and come in at this angle, see a red reflex that's the, the vascular redness of the uh, uh, retina. And I'm getting closer, focusing in to see the disc, and then I could just peer around to see the surrounding blood vessels and retina, and back off. Okay, thank you. Another fine point about the uh, ophthalmoscopic exam, because it's, it's sometimes awkward when you first start doing this, and um, either with how the patient is positioned or how you're using the, uh, the ophthalmoscope. Okay, so now if I were to look into the patient's uh, fundi right now, we've ta talked about the exam, we're going to darken the room, we've done that, and I may be really having to lean over quite a bit and if I feel myself in an awkward position, it's going to be even more difficult for me to look at what I want to see. So I'd have to ask her to please sit up straight and, uh, and perhaps turn a little and get to the end of the table. And again, don't move your eyes. Focus in on, a, on, a, on the clock or the knob on the cabinet over there. And um, again, I, holding her shoulder helps position me so I'm not falling over as I'm trying to look in on her, on her retina on this side. Okay. And... Um, uh, so it's important to position her properly as well as for me to um, use the ophthalmoscope uh, in, in a way where I could see what I want to see without being in an awkward uh, um, angle. A critical point about the ophthalmoscopic exam is to hold the ophthalmoscope very close to your face, actually with the top against your eyebrow in the lower portion against your cheek, this close to your eye, and so you could turn your head, ophthalmoscope, and hand in one motion. And when you're going to start looking at the patient's eye, you're going to start with the black or green numbers, which are positive diopters at around number 8 or so, 8 or 10. And at this distance, observe the red reflex. And as you're getting closer to the patient, slowly turn the diopter dial towards zero. And as you're getting closer, looking at the optic disc and retina, you may need to slowly move into the red numbers, the negative diopters, or back into the low green or black positive diopters to get into focus. And now we've put the room lights uh, uh, back up. Um, just for a moment, uh, because I want to also check the pupillary light reflex. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is briefly shine a light in your eye. We're going to do the same thing, just staring off at that spot, that target on the wall. Okay, so again, I'd, the, the light would be dimmed, and you're staring off, and we're going to look at the pupillary light reflex, shining light in one eye, and seeing that that pupil constricts as well as the other one, and then in the other eye. 